Jesus said, Nothing is hidden that will not be disclosed, nor is anything secret that will not come to light. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin. God of compassion, in Jesus Christ you reveal the light of your glory, but we turn away, distracted by our own plans. We confess that we speak when we should listen and act when we should wait. Forgive our aimless enthusiasms. Grant us wisdom to live in your light and to follow in the way of your beloved Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord God, hear us now as we confess our sin before you. The one who calls light out of darkness now shines in our hearts to reveal the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God.
The word authority means they have the right to tell others what to do. In other words, they have the power to give instructions. And that's really important. We need to know what the instructions are and who is giving them. Is that why we need the Bible? It's like our instruction book from God and Jesus? Yes! So, the story of the transfiguration teaches us that God and Jesus are the ones we should obey. And we learn how God wants us to live and how we should treat others by reading our Bible. Well then, I guess it's a really good thing that the second graders are receiving their Bibles today. Yes, it is. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us the Bible to be our instruction guide. Thank you for teaching us through scripture about who you are, who Jesus is, and who the Holy Spirit is. Thank you for a loving church family that gives us Bibles so that we can learn more and more about who you are and who you want us to become. Guide us as we read our Bibles and send the Holy Spirit and trusted Christian mentors to help us understand what we read. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, is this on? Okay. Um, uh, then at this time, I would invite Alex and Tanner and Griff. Come on up. You can just grab a seat right where you would have back in the before time. <laughs> just right here on the top. I'm just going to talk to you briefly, just briefly. I'm not going to, you know, you guys have a short time span. So do I. Let's be real. Um, so, as Holly pointed out in the children's time video, children's sermon video, we are super excited to give you guys and gal. A Bible because it's just it's so important to read and it's going to be hard to read it sometimes okay uh, trust me I know it's hard to read it sometimes but that doesn't mean we don't try and here's the wonderful thing Alex do you have two parents do you have grandparents do you have a pastor Griff same question questions you have all those things right Tanner, you got all those things, right? Yes. Yep. Are they ready, willing, and able to hear you ask questions? Yeah. Yeah. The Bible is a complicated thing. It's tricky. It's, it's, it's hard to read, but it's good to read. Okay? I'm not trying to intimidate you. I'm saying, please read it. It's a good read. And don't hesitate to ask questions. If something's confusing, Ask someone. If something's hard, ask someone. Talk about it. Part of the, the reason that we have the Bible is not just to read it, but it's to talk about it. Okay? That's something that, like, for example, the Jews, they do really well. They love to talk about the Bible. Okay? There are scrolls and scrolls and scrolls of rabbis throughout the centuries who have talked about the Bible, talked about what God was trying to say. Okay? All right? So, I want you to take these home. I want you to read them. And I want you to talk about them. And if you want to come and talk to me about them, oh, please, that's my favorite part of the job. That's my favorite part. Okay? So, let's see. Who we got first? Are we doing, how are we, yeah, are we doing, like, what are we doing? Okay. We're going to want to do pictures and stuff. Okay. So, Alex. Would you like me to use your full name? No, Alex, why don't you step on up? Okay. Congratulations. Read it. Ask questions. Okay. Good job, sweetie. Griff. Come on, brother. Okay. Read it. Ask questions. And, and enjoy it. Okay. And Mr. Tanner. Come on up, buddy. Okay, read it, enjoy it, ask questions. Okay, bud? Okay. Wonderful. All right. God is trying 
heavenly splendor, your voice makes the earth tremble and wonder. Overshadow us with your spirit, so that we may hear your word and live as a faithful disciples and covenant people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, good morning and a very happy Valentine's Day to you all. Good morning to those at home. Good to see you all. Hand wave for the Zoom folks. Hand wave for all of you. Um, lots of people to thank today. Goodness gracious, we've got Diane leading worship through music. So thank you, Diane. We'll have, uh, let's see, Sharon and Linda and Diane and... Mary playing bells in a bit, so thank you to all of you ladies. Uh, we've got Holly doing the children's time, uh, so thank you for that. We've got uh, all you families who came and uh, brought your children today to receive their Bibles, so thank you to all of you for showing up and, uh, and allowing us to gift your child with that Bible. It's a good gift. Okay, um, yeah, it's Valentine's Day. Golly day, it does not feel like Valentine's Day, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but thank you, Amy, for reminding us, yes, I know, yes, there we go, yes, the hearts are on your sweatshirt, so that's what we'll have to take for our Valentine's Day reminder this day, and uh, yeah, I'm not going to really fuse Valentine's Day into the sermon, sorry, it's, we're taking a different tack on that, so, um, two, no, three readings today, I'm going to do two from the Old Testament, and then one from the New. So uh, to start in the Old Testament, uh, we're going to read from 2 Kings chapter 2, just verse 12, and then jump to Psalm 50. Let us all now listen for the word of the Lord. And Elisha saw it being a whirlwind, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. And then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into pieces. Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6. The mighty one, God, I am who I am, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes. He does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire. Around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful ones who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness for God himself is judge. And our New Testament reading today comes from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, uh, it, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say because they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them, but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. And now, Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable. In thy sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Clark Kent, Bruce Wayne, Peter Parker, Miles Morales, Tony Stark, the king of Wakanda. 
There is something that is so familiar about heroes having secret identities. It's so pervasive throughout the storytelling landscape that some might feel hero and secret identity have practically become synonymous. Perhaps it has become such that you actually cannot be a hero unless your identity remains secret. Historically speaking, of course, I am aware that in more recent movies made and produced, specifically in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they've started playing around with the concept of not keeping one's secret identity hidden. Traditionally, though, we have seen the trope of heroes hiding their identity so frequently that oftentimes part of a hero's initial angst is in his or her work of picking an appropriate costume, an appropriate mask behind which to hide their more mundane selves as they go about the heroic work they feel called to or destined to or perhaps obligated to. With great power comes great responsibility, right? Now, have you ever wondered where this heroic secret identity trope comes from? Now, I've not done the actual historical work, so I will simply be drawing upon observed parallels and similarities, though I would be interested in the history of comic book heroes and the secret identity trope that is part and parcel. So if anybody wants to do that research and come back to me, thank you, appreciate it. For example, I do know that uh, like classic heroes of Greek literature uh, never hid their identity in order to do something heroic. Their, her, their heroism was very similar to the types of heroism we see from our secret identity friends in that they saved towns and villages and fought off mythical beasts and monsters, but they did so out in the open and that's different, right? Another difference between today's hero and the ancient Greek heroes was that oftentimes the Greek heroes were on some type of hero's journey, right? If you've ever studied classic literature, Hero's journey is a phrase that you will become very familiar with. I see a teacher nodding her head. Yes, I know about the hero's journey. Yeah, so if you have any familiarity, any exposure whatsoever, you'll know about that. Um, on the hero's journey, they often had to deal with some type of setback, right? Or multiple setbacks. Physical, emotional, mental, something, anything, multiple. The Greek hero then had to overcome whatever those myriad of setbacks were, and doing so made him or her, mostly him, heroic. And so perseverance, diligence, was often what made the Greek hero heroic. Yes, the setbacks were external to the hero, but they were also internal. And so there was a nuance to the Greek hero character that the writers took the time to elucidate and readers had the patience to read through. Today, especially in the cinematic experience, we've lost our patience for the finer points of storytelling, for the nuance of the hero's journey. With our ever decreasing attention span, yes, mine included, we're just wanting to know when the next thing is gonna blow up. When does the excitement come? Keep our senses titillated. Keep the dip, dopamine hits coming. Or we'll just head back to our devices to see how many red, di red dots we have over applications that reveal to us that people are paying attention to us. Here's how this relates. Perhaps our online profiles have become our masks. Have become our costumes, which we use to cover our quote unquote secret identities. And that's the hard part. That's the more complex narrative of nuance. Not all masks and costumes reveal our better selves. Sometimes they reveal our worst selves. It is not just heroes who wear masks and costumes, is it? For some, putting on a mask or costume gives them the confidence or license or ability, whatever it is, to act on their worst instincts. And, in, and intuitions. Everyone is corruptible. Everyone is good. Hear me. Everyone is corruptible. Everyone is good. God deems it as such, the goodness. God made everything, including humanity, 
and saw that it was good. Genesis 1, read it again. That free moral agency that we've been given. So as to choose to love God freely also makes us corruptible. Goodness and corruptibility can and does exist simultaneously. Our comic book heroes and villains have lived into this very tension. And later I'm going to contend that Jesus lives into this very tension. Whether it's Peter Parker fusing with a symbiote, Google that, it's true, it's a real thing. Or the daredevil becoming possessed by a malevolent spirit. Yeah, that's another one. Look it up. Interesting read. We continue to be privy to this existential dilemma, which is goodness and corruptibility coexisting simultaneously. Back to the beginning. The list of heroic secret identities I started the sermon with. What about adding Jesus of Nazareth to that list? You can't see it under here, but I'm doing that. Hmm, that's interesting. I would contend that Jesus is a mashup between the Greeks, Greek hero's journey hero and the secret identity hero of our modern day. Therefore, Jesus follows in the footsteps of those heroes who have gone before and sets forth a model for our modern day heroes to follow. For example, one could argue that Jesus' entire approximately three years of ministry was about the hero's journey of perseverance and overcoming. Think about it. Remember good and corruptibility coexisting? Jesus' hero's journey begins with 40 days of fasting out in the wilderness where he is tempted by the enemy on three separate occasions. All of Jesus' earthly, not just divine, but now earthly securities are stripped away, making him that much more susceptible to corruption. Hello, he's got no food, he's got no water, he's got no shelter. And he's already laid down his divinity to put on human flesh. Ooh, talk about a hero's journey. Imagine his internal dialogue, imagine his prayers to God. The Son of God, God's self, has put on human flesh his own secret identity and has willingly accepted all of the limitations that come along with human flesh. Yes, we are limited people, including corruptibility. If we didn't already know the end, imagine reading this fresh as if we didn't know the end. If we didn't know the end, perhaps the hero's journey would be over before it even really got started. Read it with a fresh set of eyes, like we pretend you don't know the end. That's a rough start. But no, Jesus endures. Jesus perseveres. Jesus overcomes. In doing so, he reveals two things. One, he is a hero. In the truest sense of the word. And two... Being susceptible to corruptibility does not mean we have to succumb. Does not mean we have to choose. Choose it. We can choose God. And for the rest of his ministry, Jesus is opposed at every turn. Every turn, he's opposed. It's a constant series of overcoming adversity. The religious, political, wealthy elites want nothing to do with them. They try to oppose him theologically, politically, monetarily, and they fail at every turn because Jesus endures and perseveres on his hero's journey. And even at the end of his hero's journey, where we are led to believe that he finally succumbed to the powers that be, he endures and perseveres through death, 
through descent to resurrection. Again, read it with a fresh set of eyes. Pretend you don't know the end. It's gripping. Better than any comic book. And Jesus' endurance and perseverance through death, descent, resurrection is a promise. A promise that corruptibility, yes, even corruptibility, will someday be overcome. Meanwhile, he is, for all intents and purposes, to the vast majority of the masses of people who flock to him, just plain old Jesus of Nazareth. Blah, 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 blah. We see the gospel writers make reference to the people mocking this person. Oh, psh, that's just that crazy Galilean. Right? Isn't he a carpenter's son? Psh, Nazareth? Nothing good ever came out of Nazareth. It's like the ultimate secret identity. Only a very small handful of people are privy to his true heroic identity as son of God. Messiah. And even those who are privy still don't quite get the significance of it all. Oh, Peter. Poor bumbling Peter. In his shock at what his eyes were telling him, could simply get out, well, gee, Rabbi, thanks for inviting us. Uh, should we make three tents? One for you and your guests? Like, <laughs> we can't really blame him. <laughs> It says right after that, it attests. Dude, they were terrified. <laughs> shocked. Numb from being shocked. Overwhelmed. And yet it feels somewhat anticlimactic, right? This is the big reveal. Come on, where are the fireworks? This is, you know, Mary Jane finding out Spider-Man is Peter Parker. Lois Lane, finding out Superman is Clark Kent. Where are the fireworks? Where's the emotion, the angst? All we get is... But we can't really blame them, can we? <laughs> A lot of us would probably have, the, probably have the same response when we understand who Jesus truly is. And yet, despite us being conditioned for the big type of response because of our interactions with comic book culture and of secret identity reveals, if we're being honest, Peter's reaction is likely the most honest of all. Jaw-dropping. Dumbfounded. Numbed. Due to shock and awe. And it is here that we get to understand, and Peter will later proclaim it. You're, you, you, Jesus, you, you're the hero. You're, you're not just Jesus. You're the Messiah. You're not just some controversial rabbi from the backwaters of society. You're, you're Emmanuel. You're God with us whole lot to take in. And yet take it in we must. Because this reminds us of something else. Oftentimes our heroes are those we least expect. And our villains are those whom we should have suspected but were distracted by their wealth or power or influence. Now, you may all think these comparisons crazy or disrespectful, but as I noted earlier, I challenge you, reread any one of the gospels, any one of the gospel accounts, trying to lay down that you already know the ending. Try to read any one of them as if you're reading it again for the first time. 
The storytelling of the hero's journey is quite gripping, quite intense. Is Jesus the model for our modern day heroes and the tropes associated with them? Is Jesus the model for having a secret identity or a model for being both good and corruptible? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that as stated earlier, Jesus' resurrection is a promise that corruptibility, yes, even corruptibility, will someday be overcome. And we're invited. We're invited to follow Jesus in that hero's journey on a journey of our own. And praise God for that. Praise be. The secret identity is revealed to us. Jesus of Nazareth is indeed the hero we all need. Emmanuel, God with us. Messiah, he who saves. Thanks be to God. Amen. Very nice. Thank you, David.
Let us continue in our response to God's word read and proclaimed with the uh, affirmation of our common faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us continue our response to God's word, read and proclaimed through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Let us present ourselves to God as those who have been delivered from death unto life. During this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, we humbly ask that pledges and donations be dropped off in the indicated basket in the narthex, either prior to or after the worship service. Thank you. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for these gifts, both monetary and musical, which we have received. Give us wisdom and discernment as best how to utilize them for the upbuilding of your kingdom. May your divine will be done and not our own. Amen.
experience for the people. You said? I asked, I asked Kirk to do something about it, but he said it didn't work. I know. I know. Okay. Anything in the chat, Molly? Anything in the chat? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Well, then let us pray. Oh God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah. And in the voice from the cloud, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us, with Christ, heirs of your glory, and bring us to enjoy its fullness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, we continue in our prayer as we give thanks. We give thanks for the marriage of Jim and Marilyn Beal, 67 years strong. That is a, that is, that, that is a heroic feat, uh, filled with ups and downs, filled with things to overcome, and an example of perseverance and endurance. And we equally give you thanks for the 55th wedding anniversary of Dale and Judy Beal and honor their heroic journey as well in relationship to one another and in relationship with their family and community. Abide with both of those couples, abide with all couples as we continue to practice perseverance, as we continue to practice abiding with through highs and lows, ups and downs, through trials and tribulations, through joys. And grant us the capacity the opportunity, the willingness to include those maybe who are not married and yet also are equally valued as far as being in relationship with other people. Lord God, may each one of us know that we are made for relationship and that we can be inclusive of one another in relationship. Lord God, we take this time to lift up to you those in our church who are still in need of recovery. Uh, so we lift up to you, Delphine Anthony, and ask that you abide with her and give her strength to recover. Uh, we give you thanks for, uh, we ask that you be with Pat Sherman and continue to abide with her and give her st uh, strength to uh, recover. We ask that you would be with Jean Henderson as she transitions from the hospital to the Madonna Recovery Center and ask that you would be with her and give her strength to recover. We ask that you would be with Ann Smets uh, as, as she goes through chemotherapy and radiation and ask that you would abide with her family, uh, Bill especially, as he continues to visit her weekly. Uh, give him strength and endurance to persevere. He is on his own hero's journey currently as we speak. There are others, those suffering with COVID, grant them the capacity to heal and recover. And Lord God, as we expand out into our community, we lift up to you, the family uh, who just recently lost their home and all their earthly possessions in the fire out on Highway 30. And so we ask that you would be, uh, that you would abide with them uh, and that you would equip people to be your hands and feet uh, so that people uh, would abide with them in your name and uh, bring you honor and glory. Finally, as always, we thank you for Messiah who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I uh, would invite you to stand with me as you, as we sing together our closing hymn, O Wondrous Sight, O Vision Fair, which is hymn number 75 in your blue hymn.